What's good YouTube? In today's video, I'm going to be reacting for the first time to the Indian Premier League. I haven't learned anything about the IPL yet. I do know that it's a league that is dominating world cricket, that uh, around 2008 is when it was formed. It has the fewest matches of any professional league, but it brings in a right, um, right around the same number as the NFL. So it's one of the most profitable um, cricket leagues or sports leagues in the world. Let's get into the IPL and how it's changed cricket in India. We've played franchise cricket all around the world. How does it compare to the IPL? Different. Just, just the crowds, just the enthusiasm, just the love. In Big Bash, go to the ground, there's crowds, everyone excited, they do autographs after. Fine, done. Before IPL game, you can't come to the pool, fans are there, walking just to go to the bus, they're outside lining the streets, and then the drive to Wankere, five minutes, they're all in the streets, totally different. I guess the real debate to be had is in the future, does a young Indian player want to be out there playing test match cricket or sat here in this dugout playing IPL and mm. for the Mumbai Indians? Does he want to make the journey that the great Vijay Merchant and Sunil Gavaskar and Sachin Tendulkar made and all the sacrifices that go with that journey? Or does he want to fast track himself to the riches of the IPL? Right. Okay. So already, already here in the beginning of the video, they've they've done this contrast. They've they've put some tension there. There's a a hard road, but perhaps there's there's more glory and sacrifice and and um, a claim to be had by taking the hard route of sacrificing and playing Test cricket, or you can take a fast track to success, fame, and uh, I'm imagining lots of money playing t uh, T20 cricket or playing in the the um, IPL. So they've already put this this tension, these two paths, um, in this video. All right. Okay, no worries. No worries. Hello. Hello. How are you? T20 cricket here in Mumbai is the hottest. Okay. Thing. All right, you guys help me out. I should know this. These people keep reacting to our host here. Is he famous? <laughs> Tell me his name in the comments below. In town. Which is better, test matches or IPL? All right. There is a bit of a downer on T20 cricket and IPL. People are saying it is the end of cricket as we know it. We should be embracing it, shouldn't we? I think as human beings, we're stubborn for change. If something is working, and someone comes up with a brilliant idea, the first thing, we are apprehensive. But now we have seen it's the way of the world, and we have to try to live with it and try to embrace it and embrace all forms of cricket. The evolution of cricket is changing, and again, we have to change with the world. You know, the mantra of when you were growing up, your coaches, etc., bat long yeah. and runs will come. Yeah. Now it is play a lot of shots and, and money will come money with will IPL come. deals. So yeah. are kids now looking at this, the IPL? Yeah, big time, mm. big time. But the good news is, you know, the team I handle now, or uh, the youngsters I see, you go and ask them what they want, they want to play test cricket. Hmm. So, so far, so good. But you're dead right. Ten years down the line, well, it might be a totally different story. All right. Because, and you will have to cater to it. I think the game will change. You know, where even test cricket, you have to be careful in preserving test cricket if you want to. But there's no question that this format is is there to stay. Hmm. What would you advise a young 12-year-old boy now out there on the Maidans? To bat long and the runs will come? Or to pick up your bat and smash it and the money will come? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd say pick, uh, pick up the bat and you know, play as naturally as you can. Our cricketing upbringing hmm. was you can't hit the ball up. Interesting. So is, is the, the philosophy that this, this gentleman is sharing is uh, bat long and runs will come. I'm guessing that's a strategy of batting. Or a philosophy of batting, um, you're not take you're not swinging for the fences, is what we would call it in baseball. So you're not constantly trying to just knock the ball out of the park. You're gonna play um, smarter and try to keep your um, what do you call it an at bat? Your session? What would you call that when you're at bat to keep your um, your batting prolonged um, and and reduce the possibility of being caught out or having something happen where, where you're you end up going out um 
So you're batting long and the runs will come. Um, or you could take up the bat and just start smashing it, trying to knock it out of the park, trying to, to score runs on every, uh, every ball or every delivery. And, um, then eventually you will, um, you, you might be successful in the shortened version of cricket that gets played in the IPL. Um, and so I guess he's trying to say, just pick up the bat and play how you play, and maybe you're cut out for the test cricket path, or you might actually be better and better suited for the for the IPL version. And um, you have two pathways you can go, and it kind of depends on what kind of player you are, which one you end up. I don't know. I'm rambling a lot, and I don't really understand what I'm talking about, but I'm trying. In the air. That was how we were brought up as, by our coaches, where if you hit the ball six inches above the ground, this very ground where we are doing this interview, you were punished. You were told at, at the end of your net session to take the bat up in your hand and run two laps with the leg guards on, and those were heavy leg guards. So that was the upbringing. Today the upbringing is, yes, play your shots, you know, go over the top if needed. And um, I feel that, you know, cricket's a lot more entertaining than it was during the time that we played in. So I wouldn't change anything. I would encourage the youngsters to play as naturally as mm. they can. There will be players who have played at the level, test level, and who find that they are not able to cope with the pressure of test cricket or the physicality of playing five-day test, five, five test matches and therefore are opting for white ball cricket. One understands that. But and, and what happens with the guys who are giving up uh, a test cricket are the guys who are not certain of their places. The guys who are certain of their places will carry on playing test cricket because they all know that I, I don't think there's any greater honor uh, than representing your country in, in, in test match cricket. If you went down the Maidans and you asked the young boys and girls there, do you want to play 100 test matches for India or do you want to be a Mumbai Indian for the next decade? Which do you think those, those boys and girls would be choosing? Uh, if they're young? They'll yeah. say they want to play 100 test matches. Still. Mumbai. <laughs> okay. Mumbai. You go to Delhi or Bangalore, you might get a different answer. Hmm. The funny thing is, though, I have been down those Maidans and Jim Carners and watched, and I was half expecting to see everyone bat as if it was IPL cricket. And yet I saw batsmen who had that over my dead body attitude. Why is that still there in the Maidans? You will always find that hmm. in Bombay. Always, because their Bombay culture is like that. It's been built in their mind that, look, your basics have to be strong. You can't be accurate to a batsman without defence being proper and intact and impeccable. Is money important to you? <laughs> Obviously it is. It is important for everyone right now, because that's how you can feed your family and yourself. And, yeah, but I wouldn't say that I play for the money, but I play for the passion, mm. and I love the game. A youngster now might get a million dollar Deal, do you fear that sometimes might diminish his hunger to keep pushing himself to play first-class cricket, to play other forms of the game? Money is the root of all evil. No, is no, 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 no. The love of money is the root of all evil. Money is not evil. It's the love of money. It's when people uh, w take their passion and fuel it into um, greed. That's the root of all evil, the love of money, the, the greed that that you're, the only thing you think about is the money that you can make. Uh, money itself is fine, and there are many people who make loads of money that are not greedy, that are not uh, evil, um, and they're really upstanding good people. So it's not money. It's not That's not the problem. The, the problem is making all of your decisions based on money. The love of money is the root of all evil. I, I hate to have paused it there, but I always get a little bit frustrated when I hear uh, common uh, misunderstandings or misconceptions about uh, different scriptures. So I wanted to at least step in and say that's not what it actually says. It does say that the love of money is the root of all evil. Still saying, but having said that, you still need money. You can't do without it. Now, how much is so much or how much is too much? Is really relative. Yeah. As long as that does not dominate your thinking. Right, right. See, it's it's not how much you have. It's about what's your mindset. What do you love? Are you loving money? Like, is that that's what it's? That's the point. It's not how much money you have. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm getting really sidetracked on this idea. It's okay. I have no problem with that. <laughs> Uh, 
contrast between rich and poor is as stark in India as it is anywhere in the world. I've come down to Mumbai's Dharavi slum, home to more than one million people, to find out if those with very little have any chance of fulfilling their cricketing dreams. Mm. Oh, this is... okay. Even in one of the most densely populated areas, there's still a little bit of room for a bit of cricket. Wow. Or in my case, a bit of bad cricket. Let's go. Oh, shot, Nass. Is it cricket for all in Mumbai? Say you come from one of the slums, one of the more difficult areas of Mumbai. Can you still end up playing for Mumbai, playing for India? Yes. Many have played. You will find many from the slums that know nothing. I worked hard. Yes, there could be a little bit of nepotism here and there. But by and large, these cricketers mm. come from anywhere. Sure, very beautiful. I think Don Bradman learnt the game using something like this. I ain't no Don Bradman. Hey, don't go fast! Whoa! Fast, but not So, you can come from anywhere. There is and, a real and be sense successful. of community here. And I'm actually in the community center. There's some lessons going on. Education is obviously very, very important. And I'm in one of their classes. Miss, what are we learning today? Now we're going to play a song and they're going to fill in the articles. Okay. Count to ten. Hold your breath and count to ten. This is the end. This is the end. Yes. So would you like to do the next one? Which is right, where am I up to for this is the end? The next one. I've and drowned dream moment this. <laughs> it's an unscramble. Andrew, tell us about Reality Gives. How was it set up? Why was it set up? Well, Reality Gives, we're an education NGO set up in 2009 right here in Taravi. And we believe a quality education involves more than just books and desks and a teacher at the front of a classroom. Mm. Because of that, we run an extracurricular program. It involves a girls' football academy, a dance academy for children and youth, and this cricket academy right here. Watch ball, OK? Wait. Wow. That's it. Great shot, OK? I know this is not all about providing Indian f cricketers for the future, but what are the chances of someone from this sort of setup going on to play for Mumbai, India? Well, it would be a dream to see that happen. Wait, wait, wait. Shot! Mm. Some of these players, although they're from humble beginnings, you can see the quality of their performance. We have had a number of players go on to represent strong wow. club sides in Mumbai. We haven't had a test player yet, but I'm hoping one day it's going to happen. The most important thing about cricket, in fact, anything in sport, is to have some fun. The more you enjoy it, the better you'll be at mm. it. So every time you come down here, try and have as much fun as possible. All right, you promise you'll do that? <laughs> Are other states catching up now? Oh, yeah. If you look at the team I'm the coach of now, a lot of them are from places you would have never imagined mm. would have produced cricketers. Why is that when, happening? When passion, hunger, you know. They just work harder. Mm. What worries me is Mumbai's record. They had a terrible season this year. But they didn't look like competing. That is the worry. Mumbai needs to pull its socks up and uh, regain its uh, power because when Mumbai cricket is strong, Indian cricket mm. is strong. But is there a great individual out there on the Maidans right now? Is there the so, next Tendulkar? Let me know. Is there. It sounds like there are different. Uh, quote unquote, I guess I don't understand geography either. Uh, there are different states in India that play test cricket. So, like, Mumbai plays test cricket. Um, because I've been thinking every time they mention Mumbai, they're talking about the IPL. Interesting. I don't know. Yeah. I would hope so. <laughs> I would hope so. Yes. But by and large, uh, the game goes on. Mumbai cricket has lasted for over 100 years. I think it will probably last for another 100 years. I'm sure it will. Yeah. Yeah. So tonight's party's over. And our cricketing journey around Mumbai comes to an end. 
from the kids that go to bed in the slums of Dharavi, dreaming of playing for India here, to the golden boy of Mumbai cricket, Sachin Tendulkar, who achieved everything in the game. This city is incredible. It is the heart and soul of world cricket. All right. So, not as much about the IPL as I expected, um, but fascinating to learn how the IPL has changed cricket in India. Let me know in the comment section down below what I didn't understand, what I wasn't catching correctly, <laughs> and uh, also smash like on the video for me if you enjoyed this content.